Trump was a bad dude. And he ran a bunch of bad boys. Barack Obama said, if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor, mm -hmm. which turned right. out to be not true for only 2% of the population. And the whole country went a about the 2%. Right. Now are you going to take away everybody's? My proposal is that we give every American 100 democracy dollars that you can only give to candidates and causes that you like. This would wash out the lobbyist <laughs> cash by a factor of 8 to 1. Freedom is back in style. Welcome to the revolution. Yeah, we're coming to your city. Gonna play our guitars and sing you a country song. Sean Hannity. The new, the new Sean Hannity Show. More behind-the-scenes information on breaking news and more bold, inspired solutions for America. All right, a lot of breaking news. Happy Monday. Hope you had a great, great weekend. The New York Times corruption, it, it shouldn't shock, it shouldn't surprise. The magnitude of their attack on Justice Kavanaugh is, uh, is so beyond the pale, but it's now pretty much their, their business model. Lies, hoax, conspiracy theories, uh, character assassination, besmirchment, slander, libel. It's just par for the course for these guys. It, it is. We've got to change these laws. We'll get to all of that today. Um, oh, we do have some uh, deep state news updates today coming. Kevin McCarthy predicting both Comey and McCabe will be indicted in this uh, attempted coup, abuse of power, corruption scandal. Um, I want to begin with what happened over the, the weekend, because we better understand something that if the Iranians keep this up, and that is, they're denying, but there's no denying. We know who did this. The president, I think, was smart to say that, okay, we're going to super double, triple, quadruple check the intelligence. But there's very little doubt that the Iranians, because they are supporting the Yemeni rebels in their battle against Saudi Arabia. They're the ones that are funding that proxy war, just like they're the number one state sponsor of terror. It is not something that we really have to spend a lot of time agonizing about. But it is at this point, it is a fact. The president said he's saying on Sunday that U.S. investigators had real reason to believe they knew who launched the crippling attacks against the key Saudi oil facility, vowed that America was locked and loaded, depending on verification. There's also a report out today they may have seized yet another tanker in the Straits of Hormuz. Um, before we even get into what and what has happened here, what the geopolitical consequences of all this are, it is important to point out one thing, that these drone attacks by these Iranian-backed rebels, these Yemeni rebels against Saudi Arabia and their production of oil and their oil facilities, well, it's literally, it, it shut down a good 5-10% of the world's oil production. I say this all of the time. People don't seem to want to pay a lot of attention to it. Maybe it's not the sexiest issue on the table, but whatever. But the lifeblood of every economy in this world is oil and gas. That's it. That's why the new Green Deal is insane. You know, we're unilaterally disarming our economy. And it would result in a immediate and dramatic economic, precipitous decline, depression, you name it, it's all going to be bad. We're going to take the, the greatest wealth and opportunity creating nation on the face of this earth, that America that has, you know, never abused its power. We're not perfect, but we've ne there's never been a, a country in the history of mankind this powerful that has never abused that power, but used it to advance the human condition and raise the standard of living of more people, not only in the United States, but worldwide, than this country. That's the country that liberals always want to talk down all the time. Now, what's happening here is we now are in a position. Let's start with where we are. For the first time in 75 years, we are energy independent. We are producing enough energy that we, the United States of America, we don't need Middle Eastern oil. It, it the Straits of Hormuz, the twenty by twenty, what twenty two feet wide, you know, where all this the, a large percentage of the world's oil passes through every day off the coast of Iran. Yeah, where they keep taking these these tankers, they may have done it again, but you got to understand, it is less. It is now 
a, the, the least significant in terms of our geopolitical strategic need than ever before. In other words, this isn't really all about the U.S. in any way, shape, matter, or form, but it is about the free flow of oil at market prices. It is about the lifeblood of every economy on the face of this earth. And if this had happened before President Trump unleashed our domestic oil and gas industry, well, which has now turned us into the world's number one oil producer on the planet, a lot of people haven't been paying attention to that. Well, I could tell you right now that all bets are off and the stock market and everything in between and rising gas prices would be in our immediate future without any, no doubt whatsoever. But because the president made the world, made America the world's number one oil producer, angers every liberal in the country, well, we're not as vulnerable to the shutdown in global oil production. But it does have an impact on the American economy if it's impacting every other economy in the world. I've said so often, you want to raise the standard of living in every Amer in ev give every American an opportunity to raise their standard of living. Unleash America's potential. Americans get wealthy. You know, during the North Dakota boom, they were training truck drivers, training them and paying them to drive the, the trucks. And it was $80,000 a year on average. And in some cases, even a place to stay. And all the overtime you can handle. Well, if you're making 30, 40, 45, 50 grand a year and you get trained in how to drive those trucks and you can double your income in a year uh, and maybe save your money by cheap housing compared to where you're coming from, well, that means that, yeah, you're going to get your F-150 or whatever other truck you have, Silverado, whatever you happen to like. You're going to get whatever car you like. You're going to get a nice house in a safe neighborhood and and have a better life for your kids. And you'll even have extra money to save for retirement. Disney, when your kids are of that age, uh, your vacation that every kid wants to take and have the ability to take the family out for, you know, pasta at Buca de Peppo, which I love, and, and have a great night and not worry about the finances of it all. But remember, before Christmas in 1975, Gerald Ford signed a law creating the United States' first emergency stash of crude oil. Now, the nation had been traumatized by that oil embargo a few years earlier. And at the time, OPEC, the cartel of oil-producing nations, had a stranglehold on the world's supply of crude. That is not the case today. We are now the world's largest producer of oil and gas and energy. Um, I got to tell you, we are it. And I'm going to tell you one other thing. We can make every American uh, rich again if we would just literally unleash these resources. Anyway, so now the president has a decision to make. So the president says the U.S. is locked and loaded. Now you're saying, well, why do we have to get involved in this? We, maybe we don't. But if the Iranians, look, you got to understand why this is all happening. The Iranians now are in a panic. The Iranians are lashing out in the hopes that they can convince all the appeasers like Macron and all our Western European allies to get back on board with that stupid, dumb, ridiculous Iranian deal that still allows the Iranians to produce nuclear weapons and doesn't have any place anywhere, anytime inspections. That was a dumb deal on top of the $150 billion in cash and other currencies. And you got Macron and others begging Donald Trump to get back in. He's not going to get back in. And the president, well, I think Pompeo was clear. We know who is responsible for this. Now, uh, what happened on Saturday, that's now interrupting about 5.7 million, million barrels of crude oil production, over 5% of the world's daily supply. And Yemen's Iranian-backed rebels have claimed responsibility for the drone assault. But the U.S. accused Iran of, of launching the assault. Tehran has denied it, but Tehran is lying. And if you ever allow the, the Iranian mullahs that chant death to America and Israel, that want to wipe Israel off the map and want to wipe the U.S. off the map, those that believe or convert and die, if they ever get nuclear weapons, it's a simple formula. It's mathematical, A squared, B squared, C squared. Radical mullahs, convert or die, plus nuclear weapons, equals the potential for a modern-day holocaust. That is not hyperbole. That is not the misuse of Nazi concentration camps. 
we could see tremendous death and destruction if that moment ever happens and how they would then use that nuclear power to blackmail the entire world. And then everybody is going to be on pins and needles. But the reality is we that's why the Israeli elections tomorrow are so critically important. The one guy of moral clarity until Donald Trump, the sole voice of moral clarity on the world stage, the Churchillian figure that is Prime Minister Netanyahu. He, we, they, we've never had a better relationship with Israel. And the president announced and the Israeli prime minister announced over the weekend that they have begun talks for a mutual defense pact. That is huge for the Middle East. That is huge for the only democracy in the region. And I, it is clear that the relationship with Donald Trump and Prime Minister Netanyahu have never been better. Now, do I want the president to race in? No. Do I think the president is going to get boots on the ground in a long, drawn-out conflict in the Middle East with the Iranians? No. Do I think the president is probably, when he does act at some point, and I would imagine he probably will, they would probably use the model that is what I've told you before, and that is, you know, what we did in ISIS to beat back the caliphate. And does this not, you know, reverberate and resonate with my call that in this world, the politicizing war after we start them and not having the will to finish them, i.e. Uh, Vietnam, Iraq and Afghanistan, that we need the next generation of sophisticated weaponry, both offensive and defensive, so that we can obliterate whoever needs to be obliterated at the right time if they push us. This will not be an easy military action against Iran. But we do have the military capability to knock their sights out. And I hope that this can be done because it's probably the only thing that the Iranian mullahs will understand. Now they seized another tanker. In the Straits of Hormuz, according to the UK, uh, one of the UK papers, Pompeo laid it right at the door, accusing Iran of these unprecedented attacks. And Iran is blasting Pompeo, and you know they're they're hoping for some conflict, so they say. President rightly, I think, released the strategic oil reserves. That's going to help ease some of the pain around the world. This is, as the Wall Street Journal said, this is the big one, and that and we have to watch out now that these drones. I mean, it's not like the Saudis don't have defense capabilities. They do, and it's solid. But anyway, all right, don't forget, by the way, if you need to prepare for holiday hiring uh, and get more workers, just go to ExpressPros.com. They have the answer. And if you need a job, you never pay a penny. Don't forget also, Blinds.com, you want window treatments for your home? Yeah, well, they're more than just light or privacy. Window treatments can transform the look and feel of your entire home. And I've got new blinds from Blinds.com. And i got to tell you, new shades. I love the automatic ones. And no store can beat Blinds.com prices. On top of their already low prices, now through September the 18th, Blinds.com is making it easier to save on brand new custom window treatments. They're going to give you a whopping 40% off select blind shades and plantation shutters. And because you use my name, Hannity, in the promo box, you're going to save 20 bucks more. Now, don't forget, you always get free samples, free shipping, free professional design consultation, 100% satisfaction guarantee, even if you pick the wrong color. They'll fix it for you. Now through September 18th, 40% off during their Blinds.com three-day surprise sale. And then you get an extra 20 bucks off when you use the promo code Hannity. That's Blinds.com, promo code Hannity. He's not a great golfer. He's a mediocre tennis player. But he's pretty good on the radio. Sean Hannity is on right now. All right, as we uh, move along, 800 941 Sean, you want to be a part of the program. Now, take this a step further. Now you got the Green New Deal. Now we're going to eliminate oil and gas, the lifeblood of our economy. After, For the first time in 75 years, we are energy independent. The first time in 75 years. By the way, if you are voting in Israel, and I know we have a lot of friends in Israel that listen to this program, you got to vote Likud. Because we can't go through another Netanyahu victory, and then he can't form a government because the system is so screwy over there, and 
you know, you then got to form a coalition government, and then one guy decides, oh, I'm going to hold all the cards. They prevent any progress in terms of Israel being able to move forward with the new government that was rightly elected. But I would take this serious. This is, I, I honestly believe, this is what the Saudi, uh, this is what the Wall Street Journal said is right. This is the attack. This is the big one. And it's going to rock the energy market in the world in the short term. The long term implications are very, very clear. We better not go down this rabbit hole of a, a green new deal that was cost $94 trillion and eliminate all gas and oil production and the combustion engine and eventually cows and airplanes so we can give everybody everything for free, which is never going to happen. Or having Alexandria Casio cortez want to pay it for it by, we'll just, we'll just print more money. Okay, that's not going to work. Or Kamala Harris, same type of insanity. We'll just print more money. All right, we'll get to more on this. We do have, uh, we have the GM strike going on. We have the Trump economic boom. We have 650,000 kids out of poverty. Yeah, that didn't happen under Biden, Obama. We got 2020 information we're going to hit today. And the New York Times scandal next. Well, the latest scandal next. New York Times writers, they're writing a book. This is adopted from their upcoming book, The Education of Brett Kavanaugh. They name their alleged witness to an alleged incident as Ma Max Steyer, a Washington lawyer, former Yale classmate of Kavanaugh, described as a respected thought leader on federal government management, but who also appears to be the same person that was then President Bill Clinton's on his legal team during the Lewinsky scandal. How convenient in 98, working for the law firm Williams and Connolly. Anyway, the piece goes on that he... Uh, allegedly claims that he saw Mr. Kavanaugh with his pants down at a drunken dorm party where his friends pushed his penis into the hand of a female student when Kavanaugh was a freshman at Yale. And the New York Times goes on to explain how Steyer notified senators, notified the FBI about this account, but the FBI didn't investigate, and that he is now, Mr. Steyer, declined to discuss it publicly. Now, we corroborated the story with two officials who have communicated with Steyer. Okay, now, the problem with the New York Times authors and the New York Times piece is the actual truth and veracity of what they're claiming and what they're reporting in their book. The alleged victim in this case does not remember any such incident and also won't talk about it. That would be journalistic malpractice. I agree with Devine. So no corroboration, no evidence, no victim, no witness, only hearsay of one person. And the paper of record, the media mob, why do I call them a mob? I say mob on purpose because they act like a mob. Manufactured crisis, lies, a hoax, conspiracy theories every second minute hour of every 24-hour day. This is what they do. They want to slander, smear, besmirch. There's no, it, there's no line they won't cross. If it means Nicholas Sandman wearing a MAGA hat and running wild with something that was provably false with about five seconds worth of due diligence, they could have found out, oh, that 15-second snippet that they kept playing over and over again was taken out of context. That Nicholas Sandman did everything he could possibly do as a 16-year-old kid to prevent, you know, the, the black Hebrew Israelites that were taunting those kids with racial epithets, etc. And Nathan Phillips, the, the protester who walked up to him, not the opposite, banging the drum right in his face. And he just smiled and handled it better than I could have handled it. You know, that, but let's call him a racist and let's do it for a week and a half, even when we know the truth. And Nicholas Sandman, well, his, his life's never going to be the same, but he's going to be rich as hell. He now has Lynn Wood as his attorney. Lynn Wood represented Richard Jewell. Lynn Wood is taking this case out of a passion for what they did to this kid and how reckless, you talk about reckless disregard, smear, libel, 
besmirchment, character assassination, and they never made a phone call to even check a single thing about the story, and they, they locked into it no matter what evidence was coming out. Anyway, you look at this New York Times, this is only the latest. You know, claiming their fresh allegation about Kavanaugh echoes previously uncorroborated 35-year-old claims by other people at the time. You know, but yet, you know, in the case of Deborah Ramirez, for example, but she admitted to the New Yorker, which broke the story last year, that her memory was hazy. She had been drinking heavily during another dorm party at which Kavanaugh allegedly thrust his private parts in her face and caused her to touch it without her consent. She wasn't even certain it was Kavanaugh. Then you have the, let's see, uh, Michael Avenatti, Julie Sw Swetnick. Oh, yeah, they lined up in the halls. At first, they would, they would literally spike the punch, and the girls would pass out. Then they would take turns gang raping them, and it happened almost every other weekend. And then when questioned, well, now that I think about it, I never saw Brett Kavanaugh spike anything, but I saw him near a punch bowl once. And I never saw him give anybody anything to drink, but I saw him with a red Solo cup. No, he wasn't lined up in the hall after all, but he was in a hall at some point during a party. This is not, it, you know, they destroyed this guy. And the other point of this is he's not turned out to be the best justice that I really wanted. A little disappointed in Brett Kavanaugh, very frankly. There's never any evidence that any of these allegations were true, but that didn't stop them. You know, we have all of these instances of the New York Times fake news. And this is what they now do. And you have all the presidential candidates, you know, Beto Bozo, Robert Francis. It looks like Kavanaugh lied under oath. Julian Castro not only calls for impeachment, but calls Kavanaugh a sexual predator. I don't know. I'll ask Greg Jarrett at the top of the hour, but I got to tell you something. You know, I, I've accepted in my 31 years in the public eye that people are going to slander, besmirch, use character assassination because they don't like my political points of view. But the standard is so high if you're a public figure that, you know, unless you can show that they they had intent, unless you could show an absence of malice of any kind, the standard's so high you can barely win. Maybe in this case you can. I don't know. I think that standard is way too high and should be adjusted. You got uh, over there at Conspiracy TV, MSNBC, they're, they're saying, well, Kavanaugh is the fifth guy in, a, in the gang rape. Oh, OK, maybe they need to be sued again because they're going to end up paying Nicholas Sandman a fortune, in my opinion, or Klobuchar. Kavanaugh confirmation process was a shame. They're all rushing to judgment. Whatever happened to due process or the presumption of innocence, even Michael Avenatti, I gave him the presumption of innocence. When the allegation of him and his girlfriend came up and it turned out three separate investigations cleared the guy. But, you know, and I'll say the same thing, you know, about anybody. You know, but if, you, if the accuser doesn't recall the alleged incident and then the New York Times now has to make a major revision to their bombshell concerning a resurfaced allegation of sexual assault by Brett Kavanaugh hours after every 2020 presidential candidate virtually cited the original article as a reason to impeach Kavanaugh, because that they want to impeach Kavanaugh and they want to stack the court. They want judges that will legislate from the bench. This smear does not hold up. Hold, hold up in any way. It doesn't. It is a clear miss. It is, it is malpractice, but it is part of an ugly pattern. And it's not just the New York Times. You know, look at the latest Turnberry hoax of of Roswell, Rachel Maddow, and MSNBC. But now, in addition, he's got this money-losing golf resort in Scotland that was about to lose the money-losing airport that serviced it. I mean, the golf course is already... I don't have time for it, but the bottom line is Roswell, Rachel, got it wrong again. Two and a half years, lies, conspiracies, and she's the face of MSNBC. She's it. NBC News. She runs their election night coverage, along with Tom Brokaw and Brian Lyon-Williams. But, you know, now the New York Times finally they finally said, you know, it looks like the dossier, the dirty Clinton bought and paid for Russian dossier was Russian disinformation from the get go. Well, what about the Times? The New York Times had to correct the Manafort Russia collusion bombshell and Manafort passed along polling information to a Kremlin connected businessman. Oh, excuse me. 
whoopsie daisy, or the fake news about Nikki Haley's $52,701 curtains, or, you know, blaming Sarah Palin for a shooting. Yeah, that happened after the Jared Loftner case. That shooting in Arizona 2011. Let's blame her. You know, or, you know, what about their anti-Semitic offensive cartoons? What about their editor that had to apologize for anti-Semitism and racism? What about the New York Times? We built our newsroom around Russia collusion, but then, yeah, it came a little difficult because, the, yeah, we got it all wrong, but we'll just move on to the issue of race now. We'll take Trump down that way. Or the New York Times changing a headline to appeal to the far left because they didn't like the headline. And so they got the New York Times to change. I mean, pretty amazing amount of power. They switch that. Trump urges unity against racism. That left freaks out. Then they change it. Assailing hate but not guns. And the New York Times describing a fetal heartbeat as embryonic pulsing. Or the New York Times, by the way, their office was once treated for bed bugs. Five times the New York Times defended communism. You know, I, I'm not making any of this stuff up. You know, for everything from North Korea, I'll, I'll lay all of this out on TV tonight. Or deleting a tweet calling Mao one of history's great revolutionary figures. Or the case the New York Times admitted that there are that 1% of illegal immigrants, you know, you know, the migrants and the migrant caravans that were being attacked and raped. They, they finally had to admit it. Or the New York Times calling Trump's, you know, son's Fredo. Or the New York Times uh, Trump tax story left out New York State real estate crash as a factor. Yeah, facts matter. And I can keep going. This is what, this is a mob mentality. This is mob, this is a mob mindset. All right, we'll ask Greg Jarrett about all of this when we come back. I want to remind you, look, you probably, like many people, are sick and tired of some of these home security companies. You have five-year contracts, one-sided. You have to pay, even if you don't use or like the service, you're stuck with them. Hardwired, you pay for all this installation, you know, 50, 60 bucks a month. That you have to pay for security. Simply Safe got rid of all of that. And we have a burglary, according to the FBI, every 23 seconds in this country. That's not good. You need to protect your home and family. Simply Safe has the latest, greatest, single best technology, the greatest technological advancement. Now, it'll protect every door, every room, every window in your house 24 7 professional monitoring. No installation fee, no contract to sign, no hidden fees, no fine print. By the way, a ton of awards from CNET. New York Times wire cutter prices are 15 bucks a month and you can take the system with you when you move. And the other thing is their standout verification technology, video verification technology. Yeah, your system's triggered. They're going to be able to look right away and see whether or not it's real or whether or not it's a tripped alarm. All right. So get the best system, the latest technology. And if you go to simply now, you get a free HD security camera when you order a hundred dollar value. All right. That's simply save simply save John Hannity. They reduced this man to when, in fact, there's no evidence that any of these allegations were true. This confirmation process has become a national disgrace. The Constitution gives the Senate an important role in the confirmation process but you have replaced advice and consent with search and destroy this has destroyed my family and my good name a good name but built up through decades of very hard work and public service at the highest levels of the american government i am innocent of this charge i intend no ill will to dr ford and her family the other night, Ashley and my daughter, Liza, said their prayers. And little Liza, all of 10 years old, said to Ashley, we should pray for the woman. It's a lot of wisdom from a 10-year-old. I mean, if that doesn't just break your heart, they don't care about Greg Jarrett author of the soon-to-be-released uh, sequel to his number one bestseller called Witch Hunt, the story of the greatest mass delusion in American political history. Um, 
we all watch this. Now we know a lot more about this. And, you know, the accuser doesn't recall the assault, but it gets posted and everyone runs with it. Just your reaction. Robin Publican and Kate Kelly, the two New York Times reporters who wrote this op-ed, should be fired by the New York Times. And the New York Times should issue a public apology to Brett Kavanaugh on their front pages uh, in large headlines. What they have done to him is an unconscionable smear. It, it is absolute defamation. And the second part of the equation is Brett Kavanaugh should sue Pogrevin and Kelly and the New York Times for defamation. It's true that in a defamation case, you have to prove actual malice that the authors uh, knew that what they were publishing was false. It is absolutely clear that Robin Pogrevin and Kate Kelly knew that what they were publishing was false because the truth was actually in their book and they omitted the passage from their book in their over the weekend uh, op-ed for the New York Times. So it, it's it to me it's an obvious case of defamation. Kevin Osh should sue and and how these two reporters have managed to keep their jobs. The first thing the New York Times should have done was to fire them for uh, rank malpractice of journalism. And this is just a shameful affair, but the New York Times, New York Post had it right in their uh, front page when they said this is a supreme smear. It is. You know, why is it? Uh, look, I just accepted a long time ago that anything and everything is now going to be said about me, and there's pretty much not a darn thing I can do, because if you're a public figure, people can lie about you legally. They can pretty much say, and over the course of my 31 years in, in the public eye, they pretty much have said so many slanderous things, so many libelous things, so guilty of defamation. I, I, I ignore it. It's just a, now a matter of course. I don't even process it, frankly, hardly anymore. But it really shouldn't be that way. Why this double standard that if you're a public figure that, you have this high bar to reach, which is now you've got to prove intent or absence of malice, as we call it. It came in the 1960s in a, in a case called New York Times versus Sullivan, in which actual malice was established by the Supreme Court as the new standard. It was wrong then. It's wrong now. But as I uh, pointed out, they, these two reporters, Pokerbin and Kelly, knew that what they were writing was false. And so Kavanaugh can easily meet the malice standard of defamation, which is why I say he should sue. Now, you know, he strikes me as a very kind and honorable man, and we heard it in the clip that, that you played. So I'm, I'm not counting on the fact that even though he has an absolute actionable case against the New York Times and these two terrible reporters, um, you know, he probably won't bring such a case because, you know, he's, he's a guy who uh, has a thick skin and it grew thick. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if he has such a thick skin, and I'll be blunt. I'm not particularly enthusiastic or impressed by his rulings either. Uh, you know, Republicans, uh, you know, appoint more moderate people to the bench all the time and they get burned all the time. Look at the decision last week. John Roberts, apparently, again, just like in the health care decision, uh, deciding for for political reasons to shift his vote on on the decision last week. What was it on asylum? I mean, it's unbelievable to me. Yeah, listen, I agree with you. Um, for, for those liberals who thought Brett Kavanaugh was going to be a rock-solid conservative, his first year on the court has proven otherwise. Um, and so why, why they are so insistent in impeaching him and removing him from the high court is, is baffling. Um, but, you know, I, I, I do think that Somebody has to step up and file a defamation lawsuit against the New York Times and and these reporters. Uh, enough is enough. This is it, but on isn't this long. sort of like Greg climate change? Climate change. Even AOC's chief of staff admitted, "Oh, this was never really about climate change. This is about socialism. This is about redistributionism. Right. This is about state control 
of every aspect of the economy. And similarly, the agenda to go after, and you could see they use the same talking point, both the media and their cohorts, the Hollywood left, everybody in between. This is about stacking the courts. This is about impeaching Kavanaugh. Uh, this is about uh, about Democrats using the courts to legislate that which they would never get through themselves or win on in the arena of ideas at the ballot box. So that's what this really is all about. It's it's deeper than that. They don't care about the, the guilt or innocence of Kavanaugh. They didn't care about the guilt or innocence of Clarence Thomas or or Robert Bork either. You know, in my new book, Witch Hunt, I spend chapter six, 54 pages of story after story that was wrong, that was fake news, that journalists uh, got wrong and did so intentionally. And, uh, and, and most of them, except in one instance, all of them kept their jobs, and they, you know, they're still doing it. Uh, and, you know, this was a shameful affair uh, by Brand branding the president of the United States with one of the worst crimes possible in America, and that is treason. And the media was absolutely complicit in this, along with Democrats like Adam Schiff, uh, you know, Jerry Nadler, Maxine Waters, the list goes on and on. But this was a cabal of the media and Democrats that were determined to undo the election results and to remove the president from office based on nothing. Uh, there was never any credible evidence that he had colluded uh, with Russians. There was never any evidence that his words and deeds constituted obstruction of justice. It was all a fabrication. And uh, this is why I'm very anxious to see the Inspector General's uh, report, which should be forthcoming in the next few weeks, because the people who did this should be held accountable. Well, I agree wholeheartedly, and I think they they will ultimately be. But a quick break more. Greg Jarrett on the other side. Also back to our other top story today on Iran and what they did in Saudi Arabia and what America's response will be. This year may be on track to be the worst year ever for data breaches, according to a research and security firm. More than 3,800 of these data breaches were reported in the first six months of the year. And just eight of those exposed more than 3.2 billion records. Well, that's nearly 80% of all records exposed so far in 2019. Now, there are so many different ways these cyber criminals will steal what is yours and ruin your life and make it difficult to get your credit back. Now, you could, you're going to miss these identity threats if you only monitor your credit. That's why LifeLock.com is critical. They detect a wide range of threats, and if you have a problem, they have their U.S.-based restoration specialist that will fix and solve the problem for you. You know, they get your information, they take out loans, credit cards, and your names, they steal your tax refund, and then they'll rob your bank and retirement accounts blind. It's a real danger. LifeLock sees the threats you will miss on your own. Now, if you act right now, this is the best deal they have ever enacted. 30% off your first year. Go to lifelock.com, use the promo code Hannity, call 1-800-LIFELOCK, mention my name. It's that simple. Now, this offer is over, done, finished soon. Don't wait. Let's go to lifelock.com, call 1-800-LIFELOCK, promo code Hannity, the best sale they've ever had at lifelock.com. When fake news gives you lies, Hannity supplies the truth. John Hannity is on right now. Exposing the Pelosi Party's chaos and corruption all day, every day. This, this is the Sean Hannity Show. I-25 till the top of the hour. Toll free our numbers 800-941-SEAN if you want to be a part of the program. Uh, following a lot of stories today, the corrupt, abusively biased news media in this country, what the New York Times did, as we've been discussing, to Justice Kavanaugh and his, listen, I hope Greg is right, and, and his family, I, I, we've got to change these libel laws. And it's not for me, I've just, I've, I've accepted it. Now you might say, look, don't cry a river for me, I don't give a rip. It doesn't matter. But I am saying, 
I know people in this industry, they don't care what they say about anybody. They will go with any smear, slander, besmirchment, and, and the record is now astounding. And they don't apologize. They don't, they don't make corrections. They just move on to the next conspiracy theory. The next, quote, manufactured crisis talking point. You know, you think back, and I mean, for the New York Times two and a half years late to say, oh, yeah, the dossier was likely Russian disinformation from the get-go. Think about that one for just a second. Well, what does that mean? That means that the New York Times is admitting that, oh, Russia knew about it. They knew there were lies in the dossier that Hillary was paying for that they were going to use to smear Trump to help Hillary get elected or to just create chaos. You know, go go through the list that I went through in the last hour. Correct. After correct Manafort Russia collusion bombshell um, and other big so-called stories. And they're proud. They Now they say they're proud of their work. They missed the biggest abuse of power s corruption scandal in history. You know, Nikki Haley's uh, fifty two thousand seven hundred one dollar curtains or the fake news blaming Sarah Palin for a shooting or the memory, you know, it, it just the entire list or the anti-Semitism or deleting the tweet calling uh, Mao one of history's greatest revolutionaries, uh, revolutionary figures. Huh? What? Hello? You kidding me? Anti-Semitic or offensive cartoons, uh, an editor apologizing for anti-Semitic racist tweets. You know, we built our entire newsroom around the Russia collusion hoax. The New York Times changing the Trump headline to appease far left extremists. Oh, sorry. Did I say a good word about Trump urges unity versus racism? Then the the mob, their biggest supporters freak out. Then they just cave and then they change their own headline or describing fetal. You know, or I don't know, it just it's never ending. It is never ending and it's not going to end, you know, or it, it, just so many different issues that have come up here. Now they have to walk back these salacious allegations against Kavanaugh. All right. So we got that on the table. Also, we're following the story. Obviously, it's getting uh, really dicey in the Mideast and America is not vulnerable to the latest Mideast oil crisis. The Straits of Hormuz are literally less important strategically, geopolitically for us than ever before. But the world economy, the lifeblood, as I've said, is oil. The Straits of Hormuz, you cannot allow the Iranians to keep taking these tankers hostage as they are doing. Or that they're funding now attacking the Saudis' oil production and capability. May not, we look, we, we can survive we will survive. We have more energy than the entire Middle East combined. As long as we don't allow these crazy people to get a hold of, yeah, uh, the reins of government so they can implement the elimination of oil and gas. That'll be the destruction of our economy. Uh, some other news. Michelle Obama, I saw this. She's charging four grand per ticket to see her speak. Wow. The $65 million the Obamas got to write their memoirs. Hundred million dollars the Obamas are believed to have made from their Netflix deal. Now four thousand two hundred bucks a ticket for a suite level seat. Wow! Michelle uh, Obama's New Jersey tour stop is offering a five thousand dollar VIP package for two people. Floor seats hike up to around thirteen hundred bucks. You want to meet and greet with the Flotus in person? Well, that'll set you back twenty five hundred bucks. Woof. Something nobody's paying attention to, week two of the NFL, their 100th season. And, Jason, have you noticed this, all the empty seats? It was an amazing piece. Well, I'll probably be seeing a lot of them in Giant Stadium in the next uh, Oh, yeah, they had a great opening two weeks. weeks. Yeah, they lost, they got, they, they got, they lost to the Cowboys. The they got killed by the Cowboys. Then they got killed by the Bills. Forget it. Season over. And they'll see what the Jets can pull off tonight. I guess they're... Franchise quarterback is now in out with mono, mono or something. Yes, yeah. mononucleosis. Uh, but I'm just not as interested as I once was. Well, um, the officiating sucks too. Oh God, it's awful. Uh, all right, let's hit our uh, busy telephones here. All right, let's say hi to David in Texas. David, hi. How are you? Glad you called, my friend. Hello, I'm glad to talk to y'all. What's going on? Oh, another fun-filled day of retirement and my part-time job. But uh, I was listening to your show last week, and y'all, you were making comments about how many people were leaving New York, the rich folks, you know, just getting out of Dodge and whatnot. And I'm kind of curious, as smart as you and your group are, how come y'all are still there besides your contracts? 
Well, okay, just slow down. The last words of your of what you just said answers your own question. Besides your contracts, uh, I have contracts. That's it. And it does call for me to be in New York to do the show. That's the answer. My staff, well, uh, listen, I'll take a quick vote. And and Linda's out for a day, a rare day off. And uh, But, uh, Jason, Florida or New York, where do you pick? Uh, Texas or New York, where te- do you pick? Texas, yeah, don't, no Florida. No Florida. Florida. Okay, Texas, New York, or Florida, Ethan? Anywhere but New York. All right, who else is in there today? Katie, Texas, Florida, New York. I'm from Texas, so Texas always. Kylie, what do you got? I think I would choose Florida. Really? Okay. Um, Either one is fine with me. My staff is begging me to move. They're begging. And the same with my TV staff. I can't move at this point in my life. Believe me, you know what you know what it's like to get David every year when you talk to my when I talk to my accountant and I have to sit through that insane meeting once a year, well, whatever. I can only Is, imagine the pain you go through living in that common oh, state. Whatever you do, whatever you do, they tell don't die in New York. I'm like, well, I, I'm, oh, I'm I'll, re- anyway, I'll, so. I'll work on that. I'll really try not to die in New York. But when your when your contacts up, I can I can promise you, Texas people would welcome you with open arms. Listen, I I I I was welcomed by Rick Perry. I'm an honorary Texan. I got that award. I have it it proudly in my studio right here. And I I listen. I want out. Listen, I don't care that other people are moving to Texas. But if you're going to bring your liberal policies from California and Illinois and New York and New Jersey to Florida, Texas, Tennessee, the Carolinas, wherever else you're moving, don't bother. Because you already ruined one state. Don't ruin the next state you go to. And that is a, a real concern and fear of mine. That They'll, they'll say, oh, I'll, well, we got to be more liberal in Texas. No, go stay in California then. Don't bother. Uh, their problem is not me and the Democrats. Their problem is themselves. Who are they? Who are, are they? they these extreme conservatives extreme? who are right to life? I am uh, guilty. Who assault weapon? Pro Second Amendment. I'm not anti-gay. Because if that's who they are, and if they are the extreme mm-hmm. conservatives, they have no pro-life. place in the state of New York. So pro-life, so pro-Second like Amendment. New Yorkers are pro-life, pro-Second Amendment. The governor of the state doesn't even want me here, and I and I I was humbled by Rick Scott when he was governor, Rick Perry when he was governor, the North Carolina governor, uh, the South Carolina governor. The Tennessee governor, all inviting me to their states. And I'd love to take them all up on it because I'll do a lot better economically if I can just leave Dodge here. Uh, but it is what it is. It's not about me. I, you know, we're all spokes at a wheel right now. Everything, I will tell you, all our focus is to preventing what would be, this, this is now emerged into a choice election unlike I've ever seen in my lifetime. Now, we've had choice elections before, but never this Stark, never this, never this dire. This is about freedom versus America dying because they will rip the lifeblood of our economy away from all of us. And it will lead to absolute poverty and the destruction of the greatest standard of living, the greatest wealth creating system and with opportunity and for all the United States. A lot at stake here. All right, quick break. We'll come back. Uh, 800 941 Sean, if you want to be a part of the program. All right, as we continue, back to our busy phones. Brad Utah next, Sean Hannity Show. What's up, Brad? How are you? Hey, Sean. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Thank you for uh, calling. Yeah. Glad you're out there. Where in Utah are you? Uh, we're out in the uh, high Uinta Mountains in Duchesne, about 7,000 feet, our ranch. Wow, that's pretty. Ser- Listen, I, I had a hard time in Salt Lake City once playing tennis, breathing. <laughs> I couldn't breathe. Yeah, it's a, it's a little stressful here when you first come, but you get used to it. You get used to the beauty of uh, the face of God. Listen, I get it, but I mean, I, I honestly, I never. I, the same thing happened once. I once I went to Aspen because I used to be a, an avid skier. I'm not anymore. My son broke his leg. I never went back. I said I'm done. That's it. It was too traumatic for me. But honestly, uh, but I went there and I like <clears throat> I couldn't breathe the whole time. I couldn't wait to get out of there. Yeah, yeah. The lack of oxygen. The hypoxia is a little tough on the body at first. I uh, we used to live in California. Somebody um, told me place. that there's altitude pills. Is that true? Yeah, it's, really. Uh, I I uh, I was a police officer in California, retired, and we moved up here. And when we would travel back and forth to see family there to come up here, it's two weeks before you can really survive again. It's it's tough. Wow, it's, it takes two that. weeks. Yeah. All right. What's on your mind today? 
listen, two things for you. Um, one, I wanted to help you a little bit with the mindset of first responders. Being a retired first responder, uh, I hear a lot of people on the radio, including Sean Hannity, say that, uh, you know, when these first responders, for example, on 9-11 are running into the building, they're probably wondering if they're ever going to come out again. That is so untrue, Sean. First responders never think of themselves. They are so trained. So well, I, no, I listen, I, I get all that, but their courage is instinctive. Their courage is rooted in their training. But I'm sorry, you see what they walked into. I watched oh. a lot on 9-11. I watched a lot of Nat Geo, and they had by far the best documentaries. They had the, the greatest documentaries on 9-11. And with all the video, there was no editing. I didn't edit anything on my show either. But I will tell you, it is, you had to know, you had to, that this is not really looking good for me today. You just have to. I'm not saying they stopped. I'm not saying they hesitated. I'm not saying they blinked. I'm saying just the opposite. Their call to duty, they did what every other person, you know, what a lot of people would never do. Everybody's racing down the stairs to get the hell out of there. And these brave men in blue, these brave firemen, America's bravest, you know, I, I, they, what what do they do? They went up. They they knew. They knew they may never make it back. I'm telling you, you can't everywhere. look at that. You see, it, you see it everywhere. You see it with with any of the shootings or any any event that's going on. You see the fir first responders going through the crowd going in. They're not thinking of themselves. They're thinking of getting this taken care of. And, you know, when it's all over, we always sit back and go, wow, that was spooky. I might have not come out of that. But it just never it just never dawns on you when you're going in. Well, it doesn't. Uh, I, listen, I think in that case, I, I look, I, I, I know they didn't give they didn't blink an eye. But I don't think you could walk into a situation like that and not really realize, holy, this may be it. I just and they did it anyway. <laughs> what makes them who they are? What makes them the bravest, the toughest, the most courageous, and what makes them, you know, the people that we want to put on a pedestal and admire the most is that is, is that it factor, the factor that they're going to do it anyway. And when you say what is a hero, that's the definition. It, listen, I have many, many friends of mine over the years that have been on the MY uh, fire department and other friends. So many people I know that are cops. I mean, it's ridiculous. My whole family was full of cops and. I will tell you that I, I would give my my fireman friends so so much grief. I'm like, what do you mean that you get rack time? Like they would work 24 on, 24 straight hours on, then they get two days off, 24 on, three days off. I mean, it's and I I kid them, and the way they always shut me down and shut me up because they get to cook dinners when it's slow. You know, it depends what firehouse. Some are slower than others. Some are really busy, and you're working all night every night. And I'd give them a hard time. Oh, you get to cook dinner. And you get rack time, meaning, you know, if there's nothing happening, they can, you know, take a couple of hours sleep if they can get it. Because 24 on is a, a hard shift. And then they'd always get back to it. At some point in the conversation, they're going to say, okay, talk, tell, talk to me about 9-11. And I'm like, checkmate, I lost. They win. Because what the, they're right. It's that one day that may come in the course of their career where their life, their ass is on the line. And that's what we love about them. And, you know, every one of my firemen friends is just an amazing human being in their own way. Every one of my cop friends, every one of my law enforcement friends, they're all amazing people. They do it because they're called to do it. It's a calling. They want to serve. They want to protect. It's, um, it, it's, it's a special person that can do all that. Anyway, quick break. We got a lot to get to. More of your calls also coming up. And... At the top of the hour, yeah, we'll look at the latest with the Iranian situation and what the president's options are straight ahead.
the stands at the seat in front of a 19-inch RCA Victor television. One more day to Labor Day weekend, the traditional occasion for tasty outdoor barbecues.